What's your personal or your professional ambition? Is it to be a guitarist all the time? Do you want to make your own record? Um, no, not necessarily. I I'm very interested in art. I think I'd like to become an accomplished artist. Rather than the guitar? Yes, possibly. This polite, soft-spoken young man who you just saw insist he didn't even want to pursue the guitar as a career would go on to conceive the most influential and important hard rock band this planet has ever seen, becoming possibly the greatest guitar player in the process. Well, how the heck did that happen? Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. It's a good thing Paige did end up creating Led Zeppelin, because without it we might never have gotten Queens of the Stone Age, Jack White, Metallica, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Alice Cooper, Audio Slave, The Beastie Boys, all of whom cite Led Zeppelin as a huge influence. Rock as we know it might not exist today had it not been for Led Zeppelin. Brian May of Queen once said that Led Zeppelin provided the overall blueprint of a rock band. In fact, if Led Zeppelin never formed, the Earth probably would have just exploded. Jimmy Page, the mastermind behind Led Zeppelin, had very humble beginnings. Born in Middlesex in 1944 to his father, an industrial personnel manager, and his mother, a doctor's secretary, Page first picked up a guitar at age 12. And the incredible thing is, right off the bat, apart from a few lessons here and there, Jimmy Page's guitar playing was pretty much entirely self-taught. Which makes a lot of sense, actually. He was never formulaic or structured in his guitar playing. He never adhered to the established rules of guitar playing. And this gets a lot more important later on. At 14, Page was already playing guitar professionally, touring with a band called The Crusaders for almost two years. And then, sadly, Page got ill. Like, really ill. Mononucleosis and he nearly gave up the guitar forever. So he turned his attention to his love of art instead and enrolled in the Sutton Art College in Surrey. The universe, however, wasn't about to let Page stop playing guitar altogether. In the laid-back, easy-going environment of Sutton Art College, Page reignited his love for the guitar, finding time to join casual bands and even jam with other guitarists in the area, including Eric Clapton and Jeff Beck, with both of which, of course, he'd forged significant musical histories. Soon, his guitar work caught the attention of a certain Mike Leander at Decca Records, and he decided to give him a regular gig as a session musician. His very first gig as a session musician was on the track Diamonds by Jet Harris and Tony Meehan, and it went to number one in 1963. Nice work, Paige. And it's at this point we go back to that clip at the beginning of the video. Well, how did you become a session guitarist? I don't know, perhaps I thought I had the feel for it. Jimmy had lent into the world of being a full-time session musician. It was during this time that Page garnered a reputation for his guitar playing. He was quickly becoming known as one of the best players in the country. He even got himself a nickname, Little Jim, to differentiate himself from Big Jim Sullivan, another highly sought-after session guitarist at the time. Big Jimmy Sullivan would work with the Rolling Stones, Freddie and the Dreamers, Dusty Springfield, Tom Jones, even David Bowie. But let's get back to Little Jimmy for now. Soon into his new session musician career, he was introduced to a legendary American producer by the name of Shel Talmy, responsible for the Beach Boys' surf in Safari. Shel bagged himself a producing contract with Decca Records on what was supposed to be a simple five-week holiday in the UK. Nice work, Shel. Shell was put to work on a single from a new and upcoming band, The Kinks, or The Ravens as they were known then. You really got me. A groundbreaking recording. Page, of course, was enlisted to play the rhythm guitar, and it was another hit under Page's belt. Nice work, Page. Soon after that, Page was hired again to work on the debut single from The Who, I Can't Explain, in 1964. He'd also go on to work with The Stones, Dave Berry and Van Morrison, among some other incredibly successful artists. At some point around that time, Page, the soft-spoken, polite young man, decided actually he did want to produce some records of his own, and after a brief stint in the Yardbirds, he began conceptualising Led Zeppelin. When I formed Led Zeppelin, I formed it with the idea and ethos that it was going to change music. And that it did. Led Zeppelin introduced heavy rock to the masses and changed the landscape of rock and roll forever. The 60s psychedelic era of counterculture and protests had run its course. An epoch of change and action was at the forefront in the 70s, particularly in America. Troops were pulled out of Vietnam, the Cold War was ramping up, and the oil crisis shook the Western world. 
People were done with asking. They wanted change. They wanted action. And Led Zeppelin's music encapsulated this hunger for action, leading the charge in this shift in the rock and roll landscape. It's pretty obvious then how globally influential Led Zeppelin was as a band. But what was it about Page's guitar ability that made him stand out from peers like Richie Blackmore, David Gilmour, and Van Halen? Now, I love this quote from Jimmy Page. Technique doesn't come into it. I deal in emotions. Just as a puppet master doesn't want you to focus on the strings, but rather the feeling you get from watching the puppet's animation, Page applies the same philosophy to guitar playing. The same philosophy he had as that self-spoken, polite young lad obsessed with art. At some point along the journey, Page's obsession with art and the guitar must have collided, producing the talent and passion that we see in Page's electrifying fingers today. And while Page might not have been the most technically proficient with the guitar, nor the speediest, it was his passion and desire to be innovative that gave way to some of the most riveting riffs and saucy solos ever recorded. And while his studio work was highly regarded, he was far from flawless when playing live. Page became well known for his face-melting solos, which often deviated from the recorded song. But again, it's not the technique he was concerned with. It was the emotions. It was how he was making that audience feel right there in the moment. That's the mark of a great guitar player. Something else that makes Page and Led Zeppelin stand out is the fearlessness, the urge to push boundaries and create something new. Take Dazed and Confused, for example, a staple at a Led Zeppelin show. A three minute, 46 second song on the recording, but live, Page and the rest of the group would push and push and push, improvising, trying new riffs, testing the boundaries, resulting in the song lasting up to 30 minutes in some cases. 30 minutes! If that's not the epitome of fearlessness, I don't know what is. The willingness to push something to that extreme, push those boundaries, the risk of the song just entirely falling apart live on the stage. But the reward was possibly some of the greatest live music ever witnessed. I mean, just imagine being in that audience, witnessing Page and Led Zeppelin improvise like this, creating some awe-inspiring music. Again, it's not the technique, it's the emotion. And you could probably say his blues influence plays a lot into this, because of course blues isn't about being structured or regulated, it's about the emotion that the player translates through their instrument. Page simply took this concept to his guitar and made it heavier and harder. You have to look at Jimmy Page as you would Pablo Picasso, Jackson Pollock, or even Andy Warhol. Like Page, these artists were not content with simply fitting into the standards of art at the time. Instead, they innovated fearlessly, introducing bold new ideas into the world of art, completely pushing the boundaries and dictating the direction of art itself. Just as Pollock became a leading figure in the movement of abstract expressionism, Page was that of heavy, hard rock guitar playing, both shifting the perception of their respective fields. So, did you know that Jimmy Page was secretly on The Who's first ever single? Let me know in the comments below if you did. And speaking of secret collaborations, did you know that Elton John and John Lennon had a secret musical collaboration during the 70s? You can click the video here for that one. And if you made it this far in the video, you might want to know that I've launched Music Mongoose Membership, which essentially means if you click join down below, you can get access to exclusive badges to show off in the comments, you can watch videos sooner than anybody else, just click join below and you'll get all the information on that. And of course, if you're not already, do subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with my videos, and I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose. Bye!